Hello, folks, and welcome to The Point Taken. Rumours of our demise were exaggerated. We are back. We are live on the Rugby Network. It's Dan Power, joined, as always, by Pat Clifton, the now angriest man in America, self-proclaimed James Patterson, fresh from his uh, peacekeeping mission in Europe that obviously went really well. JP, <laughs> welcome back. And, boys, a lot's been happening since our last show. We have a massive show coming up tonight. We have the number one draft pick, the first ever number one draft pick, Connor Mooneyham, joining us. We're going to dive into all the action from the weekend and then preview what's coming up in Major League Rugby, plus all the usual fun segments that we dive into. Pat, firstly with you. Mate, you had the Midnight Sevens last weekend. How was it? Numbers good. I saw some of the footage. It looked like a great night. It was a cracking, cracking evening of rugby, just dripping with MLR talent all over the place. Now it was a lot of fun. Seven on seven indoor rugby, human monster trucks. What's not to love? Beer was drank, fun was had, butts were slapped. It was all good. JP, if there's butt slapping, you're going to be pretty close to the action. What have you been up to, buddy? Spent last week in Hungary. So that was an interesting trip and brought in some distributors from Russia and the Ukraine, and we all sat around and drank vodka, and then they went home and went to war with each other. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's not a very good situation. Solve that on the rugby pitch, guys. Ukraine, <laughs> Russia. I think we could figure that out. That wouldn't be a, a heavy carry there. But like I said, special guest Connor Mooneyham coming onto the show. He's into year two of his MLR career. What do you think so far, of the youngster? Out the of face. University? The face. Hey, you've got me. You've got me. That's right. Now, look, Connor's fantastic. I think fantastic for the league and, and fantastic that he's really good and that the first ever number one overall draft pick. There were guys like me, jerks like me, talking about how the draft was a little bit more of a dog and a pony show than a viable pathway to Major League Rugby stardom. And the guy making me look like an idiot is going to join us here in a little bit. Yeah, James, as far as wingers in America go, they don't come any bigger than James Patterson. <laughs> is this the heir apparent? Is this the guy to knock you off the mantle? There is no mantle I'm on. I'm down in the cellars now. They're way too good, and they're much better looking than I ever was. But, I mean, this is exactly – this is what you lay in bed at night dreaming about and just pondering is this all-American talent, this superstar – you know, born and bred in the States, coming through the ranks and now leading at Major League Rugby. I mean, it's a little sad. I wish we could have like a 43-year-old Fijian who's in his like 19th <laughs> club instead. But this will do, I suppose. It's, you know, he's 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 got a great voice. He's very approachable. I mean, what is it? It's probably his 15th podcast appearance today alone. I don't even think he practices. He just does media at this point. It, 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 we were first. Like, we got him and then all of a sudden the week just filled up. So... You know, imitation is the greatest form of flattery, and we will take it. And maybe, maybe an opportunity for Connor in his 40s to go down to Fiji and play a bit of beach touch. So, return serve a little bit there. But let's bring him in, boys. Let's uh, welcome to the show Austin Gilgroni, winger, number one draft pick. I'm sure he's never going to get sick of hearing that. Connor Mooneyham, the money man. How you doing, buddy? How's Austin, Texas, treating you? What's up, guys? Just hanging out. Austin's nice now. It's been really cold for the past few weeks, so it's nice to see some sun finally. Yes, I was actually down there last week. It was in the teens, actually. It was freezing, so uncharacteristic for Austin. Hey, Connor, second year of professional rugby. Obviously, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the story of the Dallas Jackals going to Austin and whatnot, but talk about some of the positive things. That first year that you had with Austin, they go on their, their best season to date and then coming back this year and, and just coming out of the gates on fire. Yeah, it's been wild. It's been a sweet journey. Um, I mean, obviously, we already know about the story of me getting drafted by Dallas and then getting picked up by Austin. Obviously, I wanted to stay in Texas. And then just everything pretty much couldn't have gone any better. <laughs> like, I, I love it here. And my wife loves it here. Everybody is just, uh, just having a good time. So let's talk a little bit about that journey at the beginning and some of the emotions. Obviously, you get drafted by the Jackals. How far down that process did you get before things kind of changed for you in that picture? Like, were you all set moving down there? Yeah. <laughs> like, signing the lease had the U-Haul packed, like, very ready to move. Uh, was actually moving out the next day. So and obviously a lot of excitement, yeah? This is the first season. So then there's a lot of uncertainty and, and some things had to fall into place. And I think actually someone at the table here did a little bit of background work for you as well, Dan. Yeah, listen, it wasn't it wasn't a heavy carry. Like Connor wasn't a hard guy to pitch to teams to get them to take a shot on this kid. And he's exceeded everyone's expectations, I feel like. 
hundred percent. Number one overall draft pick. I mean, so were there any emotions in it when you go up and go against the Jackals? I mean, Connor, I mean, honestly, I, you're planning your life. You're intending to be in Dallas. You end up in Austin. I, I don't think at the moment, I guess t- twofold question. Did you know at the moment that there, it might be a blessing in disguise? And what, were there any emotions when you go up and pitch up against those, those, those guys this year? Yeah, a lot of emotions. Um, I actually didn't play the first game of the season against the Dallas Jackals, which, you know, had a lot of emotions in itself. But it was good to see the boys pull out a W in that game. Um, Yeah, obviously the move, expecting to go one place and then going somewhere else a couple weeks later is, is hard on not only me, but the family and everybody else. And it's just kind of like a curveball. And it's like, all right, it's a leap of faith at this point. And like I said before, everything has just worked out great. When you first were set to go to Texas and rugby, it looked pretty – it d- didn't look great, right? In Austin, there was a, an ownership that was just happening coming off of a, a not great season the year before. The Dallas Jackals, obviously things didn't go perfectly. Um, you know, the Houston Sabercats hadn't really won. Now, fast forward, the Jackals are finally playing. They're playing in what's a gorgeous venue. Mm-hmm. Had, you know, a, a w- amazing opening uh, attendance. The Sabercats are roaring back and look like they might be a contender in the Western Conference. And God knows the Google Grove are doing fantastic and you got to be in a documentary i mean in the short time you've been in texas rugby it seems like it's it's been a, a bit of a 180 and everyone's happier across the board yeah the texas boys are definitely fired up it's been a good time for sure this the texas cup is uh is going to be a good one this year it'll be sweet to see who uh who comes out with it yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're in Texas. You were telling me offline that, you know, no state income tax helps you move that money offshore into the Caymans and kind of filter <laughs> yeah, that through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Hey, um, let, let's talk a little when you run out and, and take on the Jackals. Now, you obviously never played for Dallas. You were drafted there. Pat kind of went down the line with this question. But for you personally, you hear a lot of this in the NFL, like Aaron Rodgers. I will make sure that the people that pass on me will never forget the name. Tom Brady, same thing. Is it inevitable you're going to have a chip on your shoulder every time you play Dallas for the rest of your career now? Or is it something to you? you you're what, listen, you're the nicest guy I've ever met. And ask we're going to try to draw some venom out there. of you. But is that going to be your go-to game? Like every time you play the Jackals, it's like, hey, Mooney Ham, the money man showing up tonight. Oh, look at that. <laughs> just frozen. Sam Harris, Sam Harris just went exit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Big brother is watching down in Austin. Yeah. Well, I mean, seriously, like Eric Naposky, number one draft pick, looks like he's doing pretty well for the Jackals, right? He got banged up a couple of weeks ago, so he's out at the moment. But, again, exceeded expectations. And it is – we like, I, I, I hosted the first two drafts. And, listen, publicly, you, you support it, right, because it's it's – MLR, but I had the same internal kind of questions that you had, Pat. It was kind of like, is this going to be a, a, a joke? Like, is it going to be, are there going to be people drafted or just because of, oh, I've got to pick, I've got to pick someone, I'll pick this guy, you know, out of, you know, Purdue, Indianapolis, uh, California State, University of Philadelphia, uh, DeVry. And it's like, wow, what, Connor, mate, what happened? Morgan sucking no up idea. the, the Wi Fi? Yeah, she's she's cutting the cords in the back. I know she is. Good. She doesn't Gilly's want to see anything. He's just about to tell us. I mean, just yeah, the emotion unload. was high. Unload. You, what you, a, you what saying, a lead up. Yeah, you you like, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna smash Dallas so bad that that <laughs> city will will forget the name Troy Aikman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so honestly, for me, it's a little bit different because I had FaceTime calls with Alan Clark for weeks before the draft. So, you know, I was expecting him to stay with Dallas, and now he's gone to the Seawolves. And it's a little bit of a different dynamic because it's not even, you know, a lot of the same people that I was talking with before going there. So it's almost like uh, like a few that – like some of that animosity has transferred to different parts of the MLR now. You You can say it. You hate the Seawolves. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, as you should. I noticed on the weekend you, you know, a couple of little extra ones, your you, little little uppercuts in there. You and, can't get by the you can't get by this year. Those are out. 
Yeah, that's everybody's true. getting bent for that. Everyone's getting in everybody's for that. getting bent for that. Well, how about the other rivalry at play this weekend? We've got the Gillies Cup. You know, last year we all watched in the documentary that game meant something to you guys a little bit more than the average game might have meant, um, and they got the better of you. You guys are coming in as the favorite, right? Undefeated. They they yeah. they're not coming in as the favorite any longer. They're the underdog. How are you approaching this game? And is this like the rivalry for the Gilgronies? I feel like. Last year, it probably was the rivalry for us, but this year we're focusing on ourselves a lot more. We haven't really hyped it up as much as we did last year. I remember we had a big prezzo during the Giltinis week every time, and it was like, oh, we're going to go get the Giltinis. We're going down to L.A. Let's go. And now this year it's sort of like, well, we know we're kind of on this streak right now. We can't get complacent. we got to focus on ourselves, and we have to keep improving every week. Yeah, it's easy to say it's hard to execute on that, isn't it? Because there's got to be. Same owner, big brother, little brother. You know little brother always wants to knock big brother off the perch. Yeah, 100%. Well, I mean, the, the, the talk last year was good teams were dominant. Is, that, oh, is that the talk? Are we the little brother? Oh. <laughs> well, listen, until you can put a, a ring on the finger, your little brother in that situation. <laughs> That's the way I view it. And I think there's a very, very good chance that you put one on the finger this year, but – you got to, in the words of the great Ric Flair, to be the man, woo, you got to beat the man. So you have to, you have to beat LA. I haven't done that yet. I agree with you 100%. God, you're so agreeable. Look, I love look you look so much. So likable. Let's talk about your first season. You come in and from going from collegiate rugby and then coming to professional setting, you had some players that had a lot of experience around. So you had Frank the Tank, you had Frank Halai in the program, guys like Jamie McIntosh, Isaac Ross, seasoned professionals. What was it like you for you to see you know, players that are on in their career but have amassed so much experience and did they provide, what guidance did they provide to you that was beneficial in the first season? I know Whopper doesn't provide much off field, <laughs> but on field. Yeah, Whopper loves his backs. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, 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 he he does actually. Um, yeah, honestly, it's just it was funny. when I was coming into the team, I was like, man, there's some legends in this locker room right now. I'm not, I wasn't really learning a whole lot in the gym per se because you know they're kind of on the the latter parts of their career. Oh, so you're saying that you were out out lifting them in the gym or out working? <laughs> That's fine. Whopper's lazy in the gym. I he loves saying. a good back stretch. That's <laughs> what he does. A lot of back stretching. I'm gonna see him tomorrow. Uh, of yeah, course. yeah. I live with him. I'll so take Wop can... on in the gym. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever. Um, no, but on the field, it's you know, it's it's there's things that I had never heard before, coming from an American background and just learning from you know some All Blacks, some international legends. Uh, and is that one of those things? It's your first one-on-one -on -one drill with Frank Halai. You're doing a little bit of tracking, and it's one of those things you kind of gauge yourself initially, and you're like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, it was just to run it straight. And, uh, oh, there you, go. <laughs> <laughs> you do realize you had two serious concussions last year. Do you no more run it straight, Connor? Yeah, you speaking of the Giltinis, I actually haven't been able to play them in the normal season because both of my concussions came one week before week the Giltinis. Prior. So yeah. this week I will be playing them for the first time in the normal there season. There you go. LA have never beat Connor Mooneyham. They have in the preseason, so no, it doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, nope. it doesn't count. <laughs> no. You know who else? I'm just a kid taking a stab here. Has never beat Connor Mooneyham. I don't think the Lindenwood Lions have ever beaten you in 15s. Would be my guess, um, personally. But that the tables have turned a little bit in that life Lindenwood rivalry. We're going to talk a little collegiate rugby championship later. You played in that tournament. What's going on with your running Eagles, man? You guys going to get back on top here? What's what's going on with that that life Lindenwood rivalry? Um, just a lot of young talent at life right now. I was counting the amount of players on that national championship team in 2019 that are now in the MLR, and it was, I think, 12 of the starting 15 are now in the MLR. Um, but I do have a Lindenwood Lion on my team right now, Michael DeWall, and every time something happens between us, I, I don't hear the end of it. He just blows up my phone. He sends me a little lion shimmering. He loves it because they haven't beat us in, like, I don't know, 25 years, 30 years. It's in 15s? Has it been that long? Well, I don't no, know that no. either school's been open <laughs> that long, but yeah. um, fair enough. You know, it's been, it's been some time. They've, they've literally never beaten them until Connor, after Connor graduated. They've only beaten them two or three times. Life had quite the streak on them. Um, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
But Lind- Lindenwood's running hot now. How many of the last has it been, Connor? When was the last time you guys beat Lindenwood? Um, last year. Last it, year. They went one and one. So I think Lindenwood beat Life and then Life came back and beat them. Which is good. Yeah. I think it's great for the sport. It, it really is. It yeah. is. And you and you see, I think those rivalries are going to be great. And it helps yeah. too with the transition to professional rugby too. Because now you get to you got a guy like Mike DeWall there and you can kind of rib on each other. You get to run into your old teammates now, playing against them. You get to see them out in the field. And obviously you compete for 80, but afterwards it's good to catch up with everyone. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You're also, I think, in a unique position. Maybe not unique, but, it, you know, there's us guys, right? He, Dan never played against Life or Lindenwood or played American Collegiate Rugby. Neither I, did I James. played against Life in Super League, in not Super the League. university. Right. They were all enrolled at the school at the time when I played against them. I think you can actually major in professional rugby at Life. They've got, like, chiropractic, dietary nutrition, and professional rugby, I think, are the three biggest majors. So you'd probably de- double majored, I would assume, in Cairo and, and rugby, right? Triple major. Triple major. He went for all three. Uh-huh. Very nice. Uh-huh. Um, but in all seriousness, like, how much talent is there at that level that isn't in a major league rugby roster that could? Because I think people watch American college rugby, and the perception is that the gap is so large that it's hard to leap from one to the other. You've played in that. Are there dudes that you played against in college who, given the opportunity or had the want that could have played at major league rugby? How big is that leap? And, and uh, you know, is it is it as big a leap as people think it is? It really depends on your college. So when I went to Life University, I went through a lot of coaches. Um, Dan Payne was my first head coach, and then I had Tui, and then you know Scott Lawrence. Who was your Colton favorite? Um, favorite to least favorite. Let's go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, I cannot answer that. I'm going to keep going back to the last question. Uh, so <laughs> we had, I had a bunch of coaches, and a lot of them played. You know, a lot of them were Eagles and a lot of them had this background where they're like, we're going to be the best. So we're going to train like the best. And a lot of that meant that we were going to kind of take a professional approach to everything that we were doing. And our schedules were really jam packed. I mean, there were Mondays when I would get in, I would be doing recovery with the team and then I would be going to class and then I'd be going straight to practice. And then we'd have something else after practice and I get home and it'd be like six 30 at night and I'd be getting in at like 7 AM. And I'm like, man, this is like a job. This is like a professional atmosphere in a sense. Um, obviously lesser facilities, but same level of time and, and effort going into the sport. All right. Answer Pat's other question. Who's someone that you played with or against that should be an MLR right now. That's not. Hmm. Well, oh this is a tough question. Freezer. Yeah. Well, you I know take a few one guys. on the chin form. Who's somebody that you could have played? Give him, give him a breather. Who's somebody that could could have played at you know the AC? Right. We saw. I mean, there was uh, who's the short man that uh, stopped a robbery? James. Uh, oh, JT James Denise. James Denise. Yeah. All four foot three of them, like led rugby New York in tackles a couple of seasons ago. JD's like six three. No way. Two thirty. Oh yeah, he's a big man. No, he's not. He's a big man. He's like five nine. No. Really? James Denise is a big man. And that's legit. Sorry, Connor. We we'll talk about this when you when you get to go to bed. So you just got no one. You got no one. Nothing. He's frozen again. That's what happens when you that's what happens you're when you're, in the bunker. you're so overmatched against everyone you play against. You just can't pick anyone because you're just running past everyone all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good to have Connor on and we'll, we'll get him back later in the year, I think, but let's talk about what he's up against. You know, we, who from LA is going to make a difference this week? Cause they're, you know, they haven't looked like the championship team they were last year, but they're still, you know, they've only lost one game in Houston. So they're still in the mix in the West. They're very much up there, but this is a huge game for them. 100%. I mean, I just keep every week peeking at the team sheet and wondering when am I going to see Gitto, when are we going to see Vandermerva, when are we going to see some of the names that starred for them last year that led them to that first title. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if it's them, if, if Vandermerva's on the field at some point, then that's the guy I'm looking out for. But man-to-man against Ryan James, against John Ryberg, against some of the outside backs that they have, I'm I'm happy if I'm the Gilgronis. Yeah, I think so. And I think if you're Mooneyham, it's a great opportunity to go – Heads up against Ryan James if if that ends up happening in the game. I think both really exciting young players. Ryan James last year kind of found his feet and we saw how far that took him. 
they both have very dynamic back threes, but it comes to the midfield to me. I think this midfield matchup is really exciting. You look at look at Billy Meeks. Is there anyone better so far? What three or four weeks in their major league rugby, like all star team? Meeks has been incredible, and then you you bring in Lesage. Now he's come in from the Arrows, and he's making an immediate impact. So that's that signing. There's off season signings, even up front. Says Duru, that's a good pickup for them as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because Adam Ashley Cooper retires, right? And you're like, wow, who's going to fill those shoes? And Ben Lesage has come in and plays a different style to to AAC, but he's done really well. Like, and that's that's daunting to oh, I'm following in a Hall of Famer's shoes here in his jersey. Like, I think he's done really well as well. I think Lesage is one of the younger stars of the league, like the up and comers. I mean, I, I didn't know his name until last season, and and you had to learn it. I think I called him Lesage, and then it didn't take long before I had heard it a million times and got it right. I think he's a fantastic player. It's his cousin. Uh, the the wizard who he burns the Le, lasay <laughs> <the spirit tower. laughs> now that should be a good game obviously that one's going to be on Saturday in Austin and Bolsey we'll dive into that one a little bit later we're going to take a quick break now when we come back we're going into the burner accounts people were very disappointed you weren't here JP this has become the favorite segment of fans all around the world is discovering who's running these burner accounts on social media don't go away when we come back we'll have that and so much more coming up right here on the point taken. What is happening with my wife? This one sent skyward. Unable to bring it in cleanly that time, Mason. Here comes Austin Mooneyham with the try. Oh, the rookie. G Rugby. Look at the box kick from Mooneyham. Cuts through Escuda through the fingertips. Couldn't collect it. It sets up so beautifully for Mooneyham. And able to dot it down. He turned 25 earlier this year. And a beautiful... Turnbull at the back. Callie waits. Slow ball here for Austin. They'll look for a quick reset. Callie has the ball. Mason, flat. Loop pass over the top. That's Mooneyham to the corner. Connor Mooneyham, he's gone close. He likes it. It's hugs all round for Austin. They connected to the defense. Doesn't get any help though. And Normally you'd see a shadow coming across in the form of either the blindside wing, which is number 14, but a little late. I think you're exactly right. I don't know that anyone can take any Futi one-on-one as Devro Ferris comes on at the fullback in place of Aki Yamada. And another mistake at the kickoff, and let's see what they call. And it's a try. Well, kick receipts, kick receipts, kick receipts into the sun. Misfielded there. Looks like by uh, Tammy Vina, and then great play. You don't have to. Yeah, get to, get to see some of the great action so far from the very early career stages for Connor Mooneyham. A lot more highlights to come for not only him but the Austin fans as well. All right, JP, it's that time. We're going deep. The trolls under the bridge, shooing them out into the open. Burner time. What do you got for us? You know, I'm a little bit disappointed. I think since we kind of exposed yeah. a few of the burner accounts, gone quiet. they've gone quiet. Yes, I like That's it. not what we want. We want your voices heard. So let's get salty. Let's get deep. And let's really discuss it. Because at the moment, I mean, we're going to start off with just, you know, a little bit of statistics. That's not, that's not MLR. A little, a little, burner a little what? Can you say that again for me? Statistics. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so we're going to pull up the season odds. Now, last year, it was remarkable how good this was and how close it was to actually coming full prediction. So I'm going to pop it up on screen here in a second and look at it. Now, yeah, work, working wonderfully. Working wonderfully. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Here we go. Okay, season odds. So I feel like this early, statistically speaking, Very good. I got it right that time. Yeah, you did. Well, we got Austin. They're looking 14% likely to win the title and rugby ATL. I mean, is there anything that's standing out on this list here that's completely wrong? I mean, Utah at 2%, are they that far out of it already? 
Old glory at one percent is too high. Needs too to high. Lower. This just says, to, yeah, you're probably fair. This is uh, who's who, who came up with these? Is this Scary Larry, my boy, Scary yeah, Larry? Might be. He was yeah, pretty mate. good. He is um, scared, Larry. No, he's, uh, he's these scary. predictions have no marbles. There's, there's. Oh no, he's, too easy. he's got deep data. Like, so there's Elon Musk, right? And then there's Stephen Hawkins, and then Scary Larry looks at them as peasants. So okay. He goes, you know, remember the uh, the guy from the Princess Bride. Aristotle, Socrates, morons. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, he's on that level. Yeah, okay, he's fair. He's good. I like him. I, I love that this, <laughs> I love that statistics and data, do you like that? I was actually oh. pretty good. <laughs> are, are in Major League Rugby because they're such a big part of the sports landscape here. 100%. You know what else I'm enjoying is like the disciplinary. We know when people are getting suspended, we're starting to get, you know, a little bit more of the information starting to leak out. Like you have to have this transparency, A, if you ever want to have gambling in your league, which I think is part of the impetus. Mm -hmm. But B, it's a lot more fun to, to uh, intake. Yeah. A lot of suspensions. A lot of suspension. Speaking of something that shouldn't be suspended is our neck things. We're going into kit placement and possibly one of the best brand kit placements on a really great lower body. I mean, that that really sells it for me. Yeah. What, what are you talking here? What are we looking at? I think we're going to look at – we're going to look at a new sponsor. Oh, there it there is. There it is. Look, firstly, you, I, I mean, it could have gone on someone else because I feel like I'm not paying any attention to the dude wipes and just looking at those calves and those thighs. I'm jealous. Can you recognize them? I mean, that's Bowden, right? It's Bodine. Is that Walker? I thought it was Dan Power for a second. Yeah, I got I got the tattoo removed. <laughs> <years ago. laughs> the dude wipes for the win. I huh? would recognize that hamstring mole anywhere. That is Bodine Waka. Yeah. Do you think that's the best best brand placement in Major League Rugby? And it's good. Is it's that really where you're? Is you've got your brand? Where are you going on the um, cap? If I'm if I'm the Dallas Jackals, I'm dropping the E and having dud wipes to wipe away this dud of a season. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding, Jackals fans. You guys are going to do great. I imagine like, you know, like uh, Old Spice. You just lift your arm up. Like imagine the hooker goes to throw and like then you've that. got like Old Spice underneath the arms. Dun, there dun, you dun, go. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, do you take a commission on that? Because I think that yes, could please. be the next thing under the armpits. Yeah, that's really good, Pat. Yeah. That's really good. Right straight out of the old noodle. Yeah. And that Maybe. was that. Honestly, folks, that was not scripted. He has literally just plucked that from obscurity. Uh, we got we got to get in touch with Old Spice. Who do we know? No one. No one. All right, JP, keep going. Okay, here we go. We're going to go into – there's been a lot of them against commentators. We're going to put that aside, but we're going to talk about nicknames in Major League Rugby because we've got one of the Genesis founders of the nickname in Major League Rugby and Pro Sports in the States sitting next to us. So we're going to look at a few of these. We're going to talk about them, and we're going to stack them up against some of the better rugby nicknames worldwide. What do you got? Best one. In, what's the best one in Major League Rugby, you reckon? Best one in Major League Rugby. The quadricep with eyeballs? But Johnny that, Ryberg. That was you. That was. Does that stay? It stay has it stayed alive? I. You know what? Or I think so. LA are pretty big on it. They like it. I. Uh, and Johnny's just such a great guy to watch because he's always he's going to do something like every game. But just you can get that in there and uh, organically when it happens, that's good. Like, boom, Ryberg does something. Boom. It happens. So, yeah. What about yeah. in world rugby? What are the good ones in world rugby? Um, and how fun do bus. Stack up? Jason Leonard, the fun bus. I got to meet him oh, at uh, Vegas Sevens, bus. and he is a fun bus indeed, Mr. Is, Leonard. Is he? Yeah, he's a good time. Did you hop on the bus? Yeah. I, I might have hopped on for an hour or two. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go the, uh, the chiropractor, the chiropractor, Ryan Lima, because he was like legitimately – Connor Mooneyham's entire college was built on Brian Lima tackling life chiropractic. Don't know if anyone got the synergy there, but yeah, great nickname. Great player. They were good nicknames, but let's talk about team names here. Now, the Guiltinis, I feel like there's more shade thrown against the Guiltinis and the Gilgronis than anybody else. And everybody's, you know, what's the next name? They, they the launched them on the weekend. People were drinking And Giltinis. they were drinking them. Did they finally got them? Yeah, they yes. got them. Were they good? Oh, yeah, I haven't. No, we need a review. I one. I, let's see if we can get some. There was a in. rough review from Joe Somerville. If you guys know Joe, he's the larger gentleman. If you've ever been to a Belmont tournament, you see no, Joe Somerville. Joe well. but does yeah. he look like someone that drinks? He was tini. roasting. He says he hasn't. He's been to like four Guiltinis match. Hasn't had a cold beer yet. Gillies is there. Why great. do you need one? Gillies is great. James and I did the championship. We had about eight before the full time whistle. Well, is that what their, their marketing is? Make the Michelob Ultra the concession stand lukewarm so everybody wants a cold Gillies or what? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's it's smart. But we had what the Gil Gil Long. We had the 
St. Louis Gilmapolitans. We yeah. had all the names coming out there. But this this talk about this, everybody always rinses them and they the say St. Like, Louis would be like more like the Gil Natural Lights. Oh, the Gil Natties. Yeah. The I Gil like Natty Daddies. The Gil Wises, because it's St. Louis, Bud Wises, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Gil, Gil Wises. Wises. Yeah. Go, like remember Steve Wises, the Stone Cold Steve Austin. Go, gonna go to St. Louis, smack a couple of Gil Wisers. Raise some hell. <laughs> you know, that was my stone cold impersonation. I, I love the name. Yeah. I, I, honestly, everybody rinses it, but it's the topic of conversation everywhere. Or, or, or DC could be the uh, the Gildrinochromes for all the Democrats who are drinking the blood up there, you know, at the Capitol Hill. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking global war, <laughs> politics on the hill. <laughs> Oh, God, we're going to get cancelled here. This is great. <laughs> yeah. What are some other ones? I, like New York, you go the the Gill Island iced tea or, yep. you know, that one's pretty easy. What's a, what's a good? Gilbucha. I feel like there's a lot of kombucha up Gil- in Seattle. The the, Gilbucha. The Seattle Gilbuchas. You're two for two. Yeah. <laughs> you, I could use a Gilbucha. My tummy's a little upset right now. Keep going, mate. Yeah, I think I'm, I may be out. What, else? What, what, from the, what about Kansas City? What would that be? The Gill Grains. The Gill Barbecue Sauces, for yeah. sure. You just make a boozy barbecue sauce. The Gilla Canes for Nola. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. that one? Yeah. No, that's it. We're good. I think we're good with two Gill teams. I like what he's done. Me too. Names are growing on me year after year. But, hey, you know what else is growing on me? Is the CRC is coming back. And we are going to be in New Orleans for that. Pat, it, it's the premier college sevens event year on year on year. COVID affected a lot of things. There was a hiatus last year. It came back, and you're bringing it back even bigger this year, mate. Give us a give us your insight. Yeah, I'll give you a little insight. Uh, so the Collegiate Rugby Championship started in 2010. This is going to be the 12th edition of the CRC. I'll give you a few names here. Danny Barrett, Jax hey. Hidalgo, Nate Brakely, Aaron Gray, and our boy Connor Money Mooneyham. All those guys, what do they have in common? Champions. Well, not all champions. They've all played in the Collegiate Rugby Championship, and they've all been on an MLR First 15 this season. So those guys, straight from CRC to MLR First 15. So we talk about, can Americans play? Is there enough American production and talent production? Most of these guys, this is where they came from. Hold on a second. You're telling me Nate Brakely. Yes, the big man. The big man. He won two CRC titles with Dartmouth. The first, the 2011 and 2012. Yeah, out there just Madison Hughes on that team. Madison Hughes was on that team. Nate Ebner, who played in the CRC. Ohio State, yeah. Threaten Palamo, famously, all right, played rugby at the CRC until his footage was seen by the football team, then walked onto the football team, then got a scholarship. Played uh, middle linebacker, outside linebacker. And then he ended up at the end, right, by the end of it? Yeah, they put him a little running back, too. They, they won the first one, Utah, didn't they? Utah did. They beat Cal in the first CRC. Yeah. So, I mean, the CRC has been the premier college rugby tournament. We've got more than 120 teams coming to five fields in one parking lot down at the Shrine on Airline, the NOLA Gold Stadium. We've got a couple of uh, pretty savvy, sexy guys on the uh, call, I think, in the commentary yeah. team. Yeah? yeah. What do you guys think about wetting your beak in a little uh, college rugby this season, huh? Comeback? comeback? Let's why, see, let's, why not? Let's, do let's it. dust off the headsets. Mics. Let's give it a run. I'm, I'm imagining it's like back to school. Was that the, the Rodney Dangerfield movie when he went back to college at like, you know, 65? That's what you get. This is it, guys. Yeah. Get the flat brims out. We could, I could, wait until you check out my drip. In Kohans, the Kohans. Is kids still saying drip? They're definitely still saying drip. Yes, I am so relevant. Yeah. Love it. So when is it? Where can we watch it? May 28th, 29th, and the 30th, Memorial Day weekend. It's going to be on CBS Sports Network. So six hours live on CBS Sports Network. Sunday, the entire day, is the two-hour block for national television dedicated to women's rugby, making it the largest platform for domestic women's rugby ever. And then Monday, the same thing for the men. So it's going to be a fantastic event. We're looking at Cox Sports is going to carry it regionally. Maybe there's another network that does rugby that might carry it soon. Looking at you, the Rugby Network, carry some of that, that ancillary coverage as well, potentially. So those are places you can watch it. It's going to be phenomenal. Tickets are on sale now, MayMadness7s.com. Check it out. That is one of the great plays. You're three for three. I'm going to take a break. We're going to step away for a second. We come back and we'll look at some of the some of the things that caught our eye in MLR for the, through the first four weeks. But you keep going the way you're going, Pat, and you're going to get promoted into that chair. I'm going to kick JP to the end. We'll be back after break. The point taken continues.
There you have it. May Madness coming to your screens down from New Orleans. The CRC is coming back. What a tournament that's going to be. Hey, we've seen some of the uh, some of the phases of Major League Rugby, the evolution of the game over here from year one set piece was the key, right? Everyone had to have a scrum, have a line out, and, and the evolution. Now we're starting to see the kicking game becoming so much more important. The 50-22 rule JPs come in, and just the quality of being able to control territory and possession has, has become a much bigger part of the game here. Now you caught a couple of things over the weekend on the kicking game. Talk us through those. I think if you look over the last few weeks and you look at some of the attacking kicking, now we, we've seen defensive, there's been a lot of defensive pressure. There's a lot of onus in the league about bringing pressure and they're bringing another man up in the line and often playing with just two back. And what that allows in a lot of different situations is for an opportunity just to question the defense, to make them question whether they're going to rush by putting the ball in behind them. And in order to do that, You've got to have players that can execute at the line. And we've seen a couple of really great examples. So Bodie Mwaka, uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was golden stuff where he was able to put the ball in behind and he actually fielded a kick later in the game where he was able to score. Take a look at it here. And just, you know, just heads up play. Yeah, look at this Joey Johnson, mate, showing his skills and versatility. Look at that. Mate, Bodie Mwaka this night was one of the most dominant performances I've ever seen from an individual player in Major League Rugby. Positionless rugby. I love it. Positionless kicking. Yeah. And that's that's where we're going, Pat. You've got to be able to do everything now. It's, you just cannot be, oh, I'm a prop. I'll scrummage. I'll lift in the line out. You'll take a couple of hit-ups. Everything. Look at the NBA. If KD had been 20 years older, he would have been a post player. We might not know his name. And now he's one of the funnest players to watch because he's a five-tool guy. 100%. Yeah, here it is. A little stab through here. That attacking kick. You got the defensive is is coming hard and you know does this happen with a guy like mooneyham at the back i don't know but do you know what you know, i'm noticing as well jp is players are calling the number with this stuff mitch wilson throws the hand out hey yeah it's there so now you you not only you're getting great kickers who are attacking off the boot but you're getting their outside players like calling it like hey these, these cross field kicks like you see the two fingers kind of like kick the ball to me and then you've got the ability to execute it it's brilliant it's dangerous i can feel the eye rolls coming already but i'm going to ask here right because i just saw mitch wilson flash across the screen he used to play at life university under the guy scott lawrence we just saw atlanta be the guys who had the chance to slay the giants last year the guiltinis their entire book is a blitz defense scott lawrence's entire uh blueprint on american rugby is his aggressive defense and now you're seeing the free jacks have incredible success this season putting it right behind there and attacking that. Is this a reaction to, to you know, ATL doing as well and maybe outperforming what their talent was last year? Yes and no. I mean, it's just been a, it's been a trend in world rugby. Look over the last five to ten years when they started to bring in, I think it was actually League's influence originally when they started bringing the, the league consultants down into, into rugby union and they added the extra man in the line and they all about line speed, line speed, line speed. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the first thing. And, and how do you beat a blitz defense? You either get deeper and you work on your skills to execute around the outside, but then you, you there's a lot of risk in that situation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, do you put a little attacking kick in behind just to make the defense question? Just even that stutter step that you might get out of that, when you come out the back next time, it's on. Yeah. And the, the, the discipline of uh, the defenses at that level too, I don't think you can go play deep anymore because they just – the point is, is you move the ball and look for a disjointed defensive line, but it's just not going. Let's watch Will Hooley from this last weekend. Best game I've seen Will Hooley play in his short MLR career, but boy, he just controlled the game well. And how about this? Look at this Bjorn Besson just on fire. This is a great try too. They look really good down there. And look at X Houston Sabercat pops it up. Yep, Thomas Morani had a great game too. I think it's also a function of the 50-22, right? So now that there's that danger that somebody can pop yeah. it up, it can bounce in and roll out, people are having to defend those fringes, leaving the middle third of the field, so to speak, behind that defensive line a little more exposed. Great try. Great try. Yeah, you're right, the 50-22, and it, again, that was a rugby league, the 40-20 they brought in, and it changed the way those wingers on the fourth tackle started pulling back and the idea they could then attack out in that outside channel. But there he is, big Will Hooley. As, um, hey, Ginch, you got the last one, the the, the Frey Ray try that, that Hooley puts through, the little grubber. Okay, we're, we're, yeah, we're going to pull out and take a look at that. We'll take one more. It was so good. Let's look at it one more time. Yeah, it, it really was. Look at that big, big boy supporting the line there. That's good stuff too. Two X Sabercats, Morani and Frey Ray, get, sticking the dagger into the Sabercats too. How dare you cut me? I am Houston to the core. 
and now they're going to. And Tian Lutz is out in San Diego, another ex Saber Cats player. So, ooh. It's a lot of fun watching the player movement. I mean, that's a big part of the narrative, right? Yeah, I, mean, I agree. As, as we were talking about it, the more that they can track it, the more fun it is to watch. Here's Morani going. Here's the first dagger. The last dagger I like. If you get to see it, look at Frey Ray throw the, throws the, uh, the cup up to the year. Like, what do you guys, well, Houston fans, let me have it. Let me hear you. There's only four there, but he's like, let me hear <laughs> yeah. it. Get the attacking kick. It's a good option. And it's, it's honestly, if it's executed well, how do you defend it? can't yeah you can't and then you, nine can't sweep fast enough yep so what do you do you, you have to it. play soft in the midfield this Boom. is just again and that's that sneaky thing the the winger goes out to the sideline <laughs> acts like he's tying <laughs> his shoes yep little kick in behind great control look how flat they were too like in that area yeah you, you've got the risk if they run it in the 22 there's no real forgiveness there Big in goals in Houston, too. So the kicks is always on in Houston. It's a beautiful part of the game. I mean, attacking, kicking, I think, is something that can make America fall in love with rugby. It's the sexiest play is a cross kick or a grubber through. Yeah. And to see it on display is uh, – that's exactly – if I'm George Kilbur, I'm sitting back and cackling every time I see one go through. Yeah, and it's a skill that's probably quite uncommon to the American sports fan. They're like, hang on, he kicks it. That's like a pass, and he gets it because we haven't – we have passing in basketball and football, so we're kind of used to that quick hand – you know, catch pass, catch pass. Uh, but kicking, it's like, well, when there's a kick in American sports outside of soccer, you know, punt, fair catch or run, plays dead. Here it's like game on. Like this is where it gets fun. And I would say that the American player on the outside will do better than any other player in the world at catching it because they're, they're, they played football, a lot of them, when growing up. Catch the ball at the highest point. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. taught in rugby to catch it in the 11s in the basket. Yeah. And you get guys like Israel Folau made his name in the game, putting his arm up nice and high, catching it, and the Americans are great at it as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Rebounding, getting up. Yep. They've, they've grown up in that motion. It's a really good point. Pat, counterattack. We're going there next. Another part of the game that's evolved immensely over the last you know five years of MLR and it's become one of the most enjoyable. The transition from attack to defense, defense to attack. Uh, has become one of the most enjoyable parts of Major League Rugby. 100%. I mean, it's the most enjoyable part of any rugby. And by the way, it's a high... It's, he just said kicking was the most important, enjoyable part. He loves part, it all. So. Do you like both? He's a renaissance I like man. The open, I like the open fair play. Both. All right. on both. Okay, 100% that I love them both. And 100% <laughs> they're both good with Major League Rugby. But they're both exciting plays. I mean, I don't know what to say. It, it, the reality is that the counterattack is one of the fastest ways to... to actually gain some ground and if you can move the ball quickly within the first couple of phases things happen it's something like it was a, it's an old stat but like 97 or 90 odd percent of tries at one point from the super rugby came from first phase or from counter attack so i like scoring i like scoring rugby and counter attack when teams are good at it that's when it happens okay i'm gonna bundle your two loves together here open counter attack and kicking the dropout has come to major uh, league rugby, well, rugby in general yeah and we saw an absolutely brilliant one on the weekend. New York taking on Dallas. Pungo Heine, he just dropped it from first to fifth. Have a look at this. Look at the accelerator here. The big man charging back from Sit the halfway line. Sima. Oh, I absolutely. I think I actually jumped out of the bed. I'm just like, how good is this? Speaking of union looking like league, I love this. This is literally just orchestrating a run it straight challenge happening every time that there used to be a scrub. It's like bull rush. It's like being the last man in bull rush. We literally traded a six reset, four and a half minute scrum for this. I think that was a brilliant move. World rugby. Look. Oh, oh I got to tell you, T Tucci does well there. He does. Uh, Pungo Heine winding up from 30 meters away. He's not an easy man to stop. And, he, he held on. He got on, what is it, the seven seconds on the ball? He he did his seven I have seconds. a feeling Tucci would rather see Heine coming from 40 meters at full steam and him flat-footed than see a scrum coming from six inches away. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah at the it's, moment, it's yeah. tough for the jackals in the set piece for sure. So three players, Major League Rugby, that, that get the ball after we look at a scrum on skates here in a second. But three players that are going back, who are they? Well, I think Pungo has put his hand up to be a good one. I would say... Bear in, down, Chicago. Bear. Paul Lasique, welcome oh, back to the US of A, big man. There you go. That's a great one, Pat. Yeah, 100%. Four four. Bowling ball of a human being. Um, both looks and feels, I imagine, when you try to tackle him, like tackling a bowling ball. We'll jump into Utah in, in the previews, but 
Mate, how scary a proposition now. Paul CK comes back from American football, playing in the NFL. Little green, like he knew rugby. Little green, plays for the Warriors, goes overseas. Now he's coming back from three, four years of professional environment with the Quins. Who the heck is going to stop Paul CK in Major League Rugby? It's going to take six or seven people, and all you got to do is say, hey, Teo, Mika Cruze, just smell his farts, and when he knocks over the eighth guy, you be there oh, to catch it. Yeah. Hey, do us a favor, Pittman. I know you love the show, Sean Pittman, head coach. If there is a dropout, Put Lasike back on the 50. Please. Just let him go. Like, the fans demand it. I demand it. Okay, so we've got Lasike. Pungo, who do you reckon? Do you think Do you think Ryberg? Oh, Paul yeah. Steam? That'd be a good one. I, I think, think Johnny Ryberg would be a good one. How many meters does it take Johnny Ryberg to get to full steam? At least 60. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I don't want to see. I don't know if all of Khalifi still has full steam, but he is as round as he is tall, and that's not a good shape to go up against. Yeah, he'd, he'd be tough, but I, I think he would run out of gas if you just sit, sat at the twenty-two and said he'll be done by the time he gets to us. He could be okay, but what about uh, what about Langy Langy back in the day? Yeah, oh, he would have been. No, he's the one you don't want to be on the other end of. Yeah, yeah, the, the one you run away from him. Yeah, I miss Langy Langy. We need to get him back. Come he's, on, he's in LA. Is he still in LA? Yeah, I don't know if he's injured or not getting picked or what the deal is, but. Mate, they're, they're, this is a whole. They need to so. feed Langy Langy. When I saw Langy Langy coming out for the Guillotinis, he looked like he had been starved by the other Langy Langy that played in pro. Yeah. So let's let's start pumping some Gillies beers, some calories back in him. I just want to make note that this is the first time that we brought up a positional or a player, and Danny Barrett didn't make it into the conversation. <laughs> There's a first time. For the show's time. not over. Uh, let's, let's see: Lasike, New Zealand, Bungo, Samoa. Johnny Wright, you got your American. Yeah, you got your American. We're good. We're good. We're good. We covered that one off. All right. Let's take a quick break. We come back. We're going to do all the matches for this weekend. There is one, two, three. There's six games this weekend. So it's a full slate of matches. So one last break. We'll finish the show up. We'll do our previews and our picks. Don't go away. We'll wrap things up on the point taken right after this. Made it all the way down here. Ball keeps moving well. It's a good line. Now they're going to use this ball. There he goes. JP Pussies took that forward. Still going. And now going. That's down. That's a try. Finally, for New Orleans fans, they're rewarded with a try. The cleanest mall <laughs> I've seen in a while. A good peel here. Eric Kyle with a good pop pass to JP Pussies. Strong run, nice little pop pass. Good hands by Capiello. And a massive leg drive with some with uh, with Eric Howard coming back into the play. Got another high tackle there, Ian. The only high playing with advantage. Julian Dominguez, plenty of room to run. Julian Dominguez is known in front of him. He puts it down. Welcome back. The point taken. Pat Clifton, James Patterson, Dan Powell. Let's go over the game this weekend. Kicks off Friday night. Back to Friday night footy. I'm a big fan. I'm a believer in Friday night footy. We've got to have it every week. Figure out how to make that happen. Seawolves, NOLA. Is that the Friday night game? Yep. You wrote it the is. rundown, James. It is so absolutely the Friday night game. All right. 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Coming at you. Under the bright lights so, there. Big story. 0-3 for NOLA coming mm -hmm. off the bye. Coming up against a Seattle side who just doesn't look three and one. anything, anything like they have in the past, led by some just outstanding talent. And mm -hmm. we talk about we talk about the ability of professional players coming back from overseas, but talk about a player that we're going to have to struggle to keep in the States, Lepetti. Uh, the master stroke for me is the Seawolves Inc. in this guy to a three-year deal. I don't know who his agent is, but he should be slapped around. I mean, the reality is, is it's probably a payday, isn't it? I mean, the Seawolves, you're, you've got the chips for this guy for three years. Someone from the overseas is calling. 100%, Pat. Yeah. You are 100% right. There is a transfer fee coming, and uh, they'll <laughs> be very happy to see it. But 
Uh, selfishly, love to see him stay in Major League Rugby, but I hope the kid does what he wants to do, what's best for his rugby career, and and makes as much money as he can playing rugby because he deserves it. All those narratives I talked about about Americans coming into the league, this dude smashes it. I mean, he's the star of the league. There was a, a great shot that that Ginty was passing around in our our text thread of of Ma Nanu in the foreground, blurry and. Tavita Lepetti skid marks past him He's running and down on one knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, not only like genuflecting to the to the Ash Wednesday shout out there uh, to the future. And we talked about that in the lead up. Like it's the it's the old guard and the new guard, and that's like yeah, that photo was unreal. We're talking about Lepetti so much because this is going to be a smash job by the Seawolves, right? Yeah, I don't see New Orleans getting away with this one. You don't? Not at not how. Give me, you, give you me think, a part do you think that they're, they're that there it is. Look at that. There it is. Look at that. Yeah, there he is. Oh, man. If, if, uh, in fairness, if he has half the career that Ma Nonu had, he had a great <laughs> career. But, yeah. Give me it, JP. How did Nola win this game? They, mate, they're at sixes and sevens. They've got no identity as a team. Yeah, but they're close. Like you watch, if you watch the games, they're, they're that close to clicking. Chef kiss. Yeah, they're that close to clicking. I feel yeah. like there's a little bit of – we know that, that there's enough continuity up front for them, and I think that's where this game's won for them. They've got to bring it up front. They've, it, what, what, what We haven't been talking about – what happened to Cam Dolan this year? What happened to their line out? Like, yeah, Cam's playing good. Mate, well, Kyle Bailey's gone. That's yeah. a big loss. Pat, Pat hit the nail two weeks ago, and he goes, as soon as you see Malcolm May in a lock jersey yeah. starting – the You've cupboard was empty before the season started. Yeah. Yeah. Like no identity. How can make can't be playing lock? Good for him doing it, but I mean, really. And then you think about what happened in the off season down there, late changes. You know, this isn't on Kane Thompson and his stuff. It's like, oh, here's the keys. Um, is there an engine in the car? No, but here are the keys. Go get it. I think we got to ask some questions about Robbie Coleman too at this point. I mean, how is he trusted to play this big a role in this team? As I mean, we've there's enough footage, there's enough evidence, I think, and he's getting a lot of minutes and important, you know, asked to, to do a lot for Nolan. Yeah, I just think the cupboard was bare. You know, I don't know that the coaching situation necessarily changes anything. I just talent for they lost a lot more talent than they replaced it with this season. Yeah. Julian Dominguez. Bailey, Dominguez. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Dominguez, I think I undersold his importance down there early on. Yeah, we've seen season. it in Austin. Yeah, Speaking exactly. about running straight, Jesus, yeah. I don't want to hey, see him on a. Yeah. He could be a dropout one. Drop <laughs> yeah. So we all Seattle on this one? Everyone's Seattle, I yeah. think. We're all going to Seattle. All right, moving on to Saturday. Hits the Warriors coming up the bye, taking on the 0 4 Jackals, who have become America's team. But everyone wants to see the Jackals get a win here, and I think they'll get one soon, but it won't be this one. I think the Warriors, who are 0-3, shockingly, I think they bounce back here. Patrick. This is the season. They have to. If they don't, I'm a little afraid to see what's going to happen down there in Utah in terms of, you know. Is Lasique in town? I, I don't know. I okay. don't know if he's landed or not. No, he's got a, He's actually got to play out the test window. I oh, that's right, to cover. There. Okay. So, okay. Sorry, well, Pat, go. No, no, that's really – look, this game – I don't see how the Jackals win. I, their, their scrum is so bad, and Utah's is so good. It's one of the top scrums in the league. Sean Pittman, that's his, his jam, uh, baby. It's his area of specialty. Luckily, you can only have two of them at a time. <laughs> I mean, that's the best-case scenario here for the Jackals. But I think the referees are starting to get on top of it and award these penalties earlier, which kudos to Major League Rugby because I think this is actually – I know some of the the old hardheads are probably still belly aching about this one, but I think we're getting the same result. We're just getting the hell of a lot faster. I'm waiting for the team with the dominant scrum when there's the second one. And they get penalty just to tap it and throw it into the ground, knock on. It's another scrum. <laughs> Maybe this weekend. JP, who do you got in this one? I mean, you gotta go Utah. Yeah. This is I mean, you talk about these own three teams, two teams that you know, Nola, but even more so. Warriors, they shouldn't be on three. No, I do have to throw more love to the Jackals because I don't know if I did it well enough on the last show because it was so spotty the internet, but I, I was. Teasing them before the season, they have been way more competitive than I would have thought. I, yeah, I was the same. You and I, were, I mean, they were rowing the same boat. Now. They should have probably they should have beat the Sabercats. The 100%. game winner was out of bounds. Right? right, that was true. Foot out of bounds. Oh, that's right. That yep. came up. I think you said that yep. through to us, right? The, the, nice the, camera the, shot there. He was out of bounds. Yeah. So they're 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 uh, they're a whisker away from you know potentially they should already have a win, but you know so a nice tip of the cap to Elaine Vassy and the job that she's done, especially mm -hmm. under the circumstances. Yeah. But they're not going to win this game. I don't think. No TMO on that one? We got TMO this year. What happened? I mean, I was uh, – fun stories. So I'm in New Orleans, right? I'm uh, I'm in the same room the TMO is. I don't realize it. I've had a few because I was hanging out in the VIP, tipping them back, hanging out with Tim Falcon. Yeah. You know? 
rooting his way here. I love it. Here we go. So this wasn't the game winner. Christian Dyer scores the match winner, but this is one of the tries, huh? Yeah. Right there. Yeah, you see his right foot touch. Oh, look. Yeah, the Dallas player straight up goes, points at the line. Go have a hey, – you've got the technology. Go have a little Bo Peep. So I'm sitting in the booth and uh, there's a big hit that ends up – there it is. That, that right yeah, touch. That, that right boot. Take those points away. The Dallas Jackals are winners. But uh, I was in the booth and the TMO was uh, was trying to look at some foul play and I called foul play about eight seconds before I realized the TMO and I was like, oh, God, I might have just yes. affected the play. So Good we're question. all learning. Fans, people that are in the wrong so parts of the stadium, we're all learning. not fans. Yeah. VIPs. I love Very it. important fans. Mate, how, how good is Major League Rugby? VIP. He gets you in the team. Oh, can you imagine the NFL <laughs> having a few beers in the NFL and be like, ah, that's, that's a fumble. Call it. Call it your bum. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're all going. So oh, this, this is. is the end of that game. Oh, like as much as you feel for Dallas and that, you got to do a better job defensively right here. Game on the line. Jack's a yeah. go. He went yeah. from the practice team last year to the to the actual lineup this year. He's making a couple of first team. What a what a standout for yeah. uh, the SaberCats. HGX kid, right? Come through. <laughs> yep. University of Indiana. IU guy. Played in the CRC. Was he a Lion? Uh, Chicago Lion? He, yep. Played yep. for the Chicago Lions. Yep. I mean, he's he's a guy who's five foot nothing, 100 and nothing. The old he's Rudy Rudy. 6'3", 240. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm telling you right now, I'm taller than James Denise. Pat Math. Uh, how tall are you? Six foot. No, no, JD's, JD's no six. Like JD's is he my, really that tall? He's big man. Okay. So we'll, we'll get him on the show <laughs> and we'll measure him next to a door. All right, everyone's happy with um, Warriors. Let's move on. Atlanta Sabercats. This is going to be a really good game. We're going to learn a lot about both these teams in this game. I feel like, I don't know, what's like the backcountry uh, Afrikaans, deep woods, South African, like schoolboys rivalry? Because I feel like that's what this is. Uh, I think it's uh, Paul Ruse, isn't that Paul Ruse versus uh, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know. Any You're doing so. pretty good. Yeah. The Gray's college. Rodenbosch. Rodenbosch. Stellenbosch. Stellenbosch is the big. Isn't that a one. school, yeah. like a college? No, yeah. he's talking like high school, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. It, to me, it's more like Bloemfontein plays Cape Town. Okay, because so, this, this is yeah. South Africa A yeah. versus South Africa so B. If you're looking at this, two. I'm looking at these two sides and. Cape Town, I think you got a little more flash in the Saber Cats. Okay. And I think ATLs just they're just gonna do what they've done. I'd almost go the other way. I you think would? Houston looks more like more of a grinder this year. I think ATL under Stephen Brett have really spread their wings a little bit through the first four weeks. Where is this one? Uh in Atlanta. It's at the at Silverback Park, which I think is Probably one of my favorite stadiums yeah, after the stadium. first four weeks. Looks great. Great. Stadium. Makes you wonder what the hell they were doing at the other one all these years. But a little cash. Yeah. A little probably but, Life University weren't probably charging anything, to be honest. I'm gonna pick the Sabercats. I think that uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I really do. I think that they're they have a mission this year. I think that they're on a together like um, I just think that they're more on the same page over the long haul and have a little bit more cohesion as a group than ATL. I it's a freaking toss up, but I, oh, I like yeah. using it. This could be a roster one, right? You run your eye over it. ATL. ATL. Uh, I'm going to apologize to our first guest, Eddie uh, Level Scockney. Uh, he comes on the show and gets suspended for three weeks. <laughs> um, sorry, Connor Mooningham. Uh, you know, next week, don't do anything, Connor. You're too nice a kid. Yeah, I'll go ATL as well, just on home field advantage alone. They've, they've actually surprised me how well they've adjusted to probably one of the worst off seasons a team's gone through in, in the short history of MLR. So, all right, this is a big one. The West Coast Showdown, Austin, LA. In Austin, Saturday night, who are we going with? Cougaronis. Cougaronis. Uh, they're playing the better rugby. It's they've got. I will tell you what. I'm a little surprised that it's not a bigger part of the narrative talking to Connor tonight. Um, I think that might be a misstep. It's almost like they feel like they've outgrown this rivalry already. You know, um, but I'm still going to take uh, the AGs. They're at home. They're the better team at the moment. Um, I think they've got probably a little bit more money at the field at the moment. And uh, yeah, I like them. They're in better form. Money at the field. On money the field. on the field. Oh, yep. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Maybe at the field. There's a lot of money moving to Austin. You don't know. Mate, Noxie's just guzzling it all up. <laughs> He's getting paid in Bitcoin and Botox. What about the Gogronis? Are they in? Are we going to see them on the, this weekend? Or the, the oh, teenies in early? Is it? I don't know. Maybe maybe um, it's taking a little extra time in Gilly's lab to put the Negroni and the, the – Look, if the Guiltinis get the first championship and the first craft cocktail to market, then we know who his favorite team is, right? Yeah. Well, there's people drinking the Guiltinis. That's what I mean. If the Guiltini, yeah, LA, I just said it wrong. If LA beats them at both, 
Yeah, that's a good point. Guillotinis. Oh, you're on the road. On the road. You don't, little brother, big brother. Yeah. It doesn't matter what happens leading up to this game. It's where do you belong? Scar tissue. Yeah. yeah. Where do you belong? You're playing the defending champs. You, you can say this about great sides all over the world. Yeah, they came in the first time, but defending champs with that little extra motivation this week and the fact that they haven't put it together yet, they put it together on the field. They're every bit as good on the park. Big, big question marks does Matt Gitto play? Has he been in cotton wool with this game circle? Does he need to? I think he's still cryogenically does frozen. Need, does they don't even start play? the thought till week him, eight. Him and Walt Disney and Austin Powers all together. Um, does he need to play? Yeah, I think so. To win the game, he does. Yeah, I, th I think, that, okay, they, they go up to Vancouver and beat Toronto, and the Arrows looked okay. Um, their other win is against, uh, help me out here, my God, uh, New England. Good, but yep. it's, it's a long trip all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast. A tight game. New England played them really well and probably could have won that game if the bounce of the ball had gone different a few times. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't I don't think they're the same team if they haven't got Gitto and Adam Ashley Cooper like they did last year. They've still got some amazing players. Amazing players. I think they're in danger of screwing themselves in the playoff race. Not that they can't come back from it, but it's going to be tight, I think, this year. Yeah. Curtly Bill just re-signed in Australia, so that one's off the books. Um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Any other? Bernard Foley, that was a rumor, right? That he was coming to San Diego. Maybe that floats around. Joe Taufete is rumored to be coming to a major league rugby team. He played at his club rugby at Belmont, Belmont. Shore. It could make some sense. Who knows? Oh, I wonder. That's, 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 a, that's, good, that's, that's a good run it straight challenge guy. Yeah. Too. Where's he going? Where would you? We, we've digressed here. Where do you think he's going and where do you think he should go? I go to you as if I, I – that's where I – I mean, a lot of I – mean, Naposky was probably drafted to Dallas. The fact that his father lived in Dallas probably played into that. I mean, I, you know, I would have picked Tavita Lopetti first myself. Um, so I think that there's probably some to that. If Joe's coming home, he might want to go all the way home and go back to SoCal. And, frankly, they could use him. And they have as much or more resource to get him as anybody else. So if I'm, I think that makes the most sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm leaning the same yeah, way. Yeah. Um, I'm going Gil Gronies. I'm going the AGs at home. I think it's going to be a great game, though. I think LA is going to put in their best performance of the year, and Austin's going to have to do something pretty special to beat them. But they've been doing some special stuff. O'Keefe, I'm a real big fan of Marco. You yeah. are, aren't you? Yeah, the bromance between him and Dominguez. I'm a little jealous. Like I'm like the outside looking in the third wheel. I just, I just want to be, hey, let's turn this into a tricycle. And they're like, ah, we're good with a bicycle for now, but you just keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right. <laughs> Sunday. We've got a double header Sunday. And if that was the biggest game on the East Coast, other West Coast, this is the biggest game on the East for sure. It's it's Rooney. Oh, sorry, we're not allowed to call him that anymore. Ernie. It's, it's uh, Ernie. <laughs> it's rugby New York taking on New England. It's New York, Boston. Pat, is it the biggest city rivalry in America? Yeah, sure. I mean, next uh, Raytown Independence. It's pretty big around here. But now, the league has been wanting this thing to be a thing from Jump Street, and now it really is. There's something in it. The Free Jacks are, are going to hold up to their end of the bargain this year. I'm excited for this game. I Actually, I'm going to pick the Free Jacks. I, I think uh, New York has a better pack, but I'd like Waka. I just think that Major League Rugby got it right. I think he's been the best player of the season so far, and he's yeah, been a different player. Playing him at 10, the dynamism that he's brought to the table, especially with those kicks we highlighted earlier, I, I like him. I think yeah. that uh, I'm going to pick them. You can, like, you can like him and take him, but it's not going to happen. What about <laughs> what about his uh, <laughs> statistics, James? His statistics. Yeah. I'm going to throw stats out the board here. I just think New York. Yeah, New York. Too much experience. New York, New York. It's It's, it's a great rivalry. And there were some off-field shenanigans last year that have only added gasoline to this rivalry. And and it's funny, both sides are kind of like pointing the finger at the other one that they were like, oh, what about this? What about this? And so there is not only on the field, but off the field, this is simmering away. So fireworks, hopefully on Sunday. Well, we got Old Blue. That's the old Columbia against Dartmouth, which is, you know, that's the owner and, yeah. and runner. So we got an old Ivy League. This, this rivalry runs deep. Super deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, can you say Columbia Rugby? Yeah, all Ivy League rugby sucks. They're not there <laughs> because they're athletes, Brian. They're, there because they're geniuses. Uh, I'll go. I will go New York as well. Home field, just home field advantage. Uh, they're christening Hoboken, the new stadium there. So that'd be kind of cool to see what that shows up like on. Yeah, TV. I'm sure all of Hoboken's going to freeze for that one. It's meant to be nice. It's meant to be nice. I heard it's going to be like in the 60s, maybe a light drizzle. So 
Fingers crossed. That's uh, sunny days in Hoboken. That's about as good as it gets. 60 in, LA drizzle, I hear. In, in March? Yeah, I'll take that every time. <laughs> Last one, Legion at home. Oh, glory. Yeah. Oh, everyone grimaces as soon as I say, oh, glory. Oh, glory. And just, Legion yeah, thing is as good as they fight. are right now. Yeah, they look great against Houston. They're getting healthy. Their players are coming back. Nonu's settling in. Rob Shaw had a brilliant game down in Houston. I thought he was everywhere, did a good job. And I liked I – liked, Hooley at 10, Peterson at 15. I think Hooley does a good job controlling the pace, and that allows Joe to kind of sit back, look at deficiencies, and then inject himself when he wants to. And he can come in and play ball. And he much. Exactly. Yeah. He's not, he's not burring, burring, wearing himself out. So I'll go San Again, low-hanging fruit, right? San Diego in this one. The question is by how much? The question is what's going on in all glory? I think it's similar to NOLA. I think the cupboard was bare starting the season. I, I don't know if it was a recruiting thing or a visa thing or what happened, whether like maybe they thought that like guys like Robinson and, and uh, Mikey Sassani Fangai were coming back and then they didn't come back and it was too late. They were scrambling and I don't know. Um, I just don't. We don't really know if it's a visa issue until we talk to them or until you start seeing guys start to trickle in later in the year. But yeah, yeah, it was it, their, their ten definitely came a little late, um, and so he hadn't been in the mix. And, and I'm not sure if he's fully in the mix yet. But uh, so the visa issues definitely bit him a little bit. But at, at the end of the day, th- their roster looks very similar to where it did when they were preparing pre MLR. They haven't made a lot of adjustments, and the Free Jacks, you know, they made a couple, and uh, luckily. Walk out of 10 was good enough to make uh, a significant enough change, but DC doesn't have that guy. And their best player, they lost. I mean, Jason Leonard, or uh, I'm sorry, who am I? Uh, Jason. Uh, uh, Jamison Fana Schultz. No, the 10 last year. Oh, that they lost. Robinson. Jason Robinson. Robinson, they lost to France. I mean, he was their best player. By yeah, Jam long- is out for five weeks now for yeah. uh, closing up. Uh, I was waiting for the Rockies. He got me, Mick. He <laughs> rumbles. I was just totally shut. And he's smiling because he's Canadian. He's hard as a cat's head. And he's just like, this is great couple of teeth not in there it's good love lucas rumble but yeah. yeah legion by how much pat 104 104 yeah over under <laughs> on that, James. it's gonna be owen Sheehy against mananu but she he's playing well he's playing well he's playing really well yeah. people this is one of the things is like they're rinsing the choice and he's a solid player yeah I agree. Extremely solid player. Do you know who's more solid? Ma Nanu. Ma, yeah, he is pretty solid. I'm just well, saying from an athlete, cool just from an, a- an athletic matchup, these guys. I mean, yeah. one of them, Ma Nanu takes bigger craps than Owen Sheehy every morning. But, mate, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, the size of the, the fight in the dog. Yeah. Did I get that right? I always mess that one up. But um, where's the bullis? Is he hurt? I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I liked him at 10. Yeah, I haven't seen him since that, like, uh, week two. Um... I had a point. Now I forgot you, you were going to – the point now well, was, was taken. taken. It's taken away it's from taken me. away from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to have to track these eventually. We have to start your fund uh, to get Casey. You guys owe me a lot of money. I basically think that the teams were pretty close to the $10 million, I think. Yeah, I think so. You, can you pull us some favors from uh, Western Europe for us, buddy? Eastern you got some Europe? oligarchs on uh, who could use a soft landing in Kansas City. We can make that work. Yeah. They can't get it. It's frozen. Unfree- right unfree- 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 Not with that attitude, they oh, can't. Yeah. No. Terrible stuff over there, but we'll focus on rugby. We won't, we won't dwell on that too much. All right, that wraps it up, boys. Final thoughts for the weekend. What one thing that fans should be watching this weekend, Pat? I think it's the Gil- it's the Gilly Cup for me. Yeah. I mean, it's an exciting rivalry and uh, going to be a lot of really good uh, high-level players and a lot of money on that field. It's going to be mm-hmm. fun to watch. It will be. Yep. JP? I'm looking at the Warriors. Yeah. Bring it back. Warriors, bringing it back. They, they were right there last year. You can't go 0-4 and, and compete, not not considering how tight the table is. Yeah. So that's a big game for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll am just to make it interesting, I'll go the East Coast battle. I'll go New York, uh, New England. I think it's going to be a good one. Hopefully the rivalry lives up to the hype that I've built up for it. But we'll find out. Let us know what your game of the week is to watch. And then obviously we want to get some interaction with the fans. We've got to start building that in a little bit more. We need the fans to go. JP needs you getting back on. Where do you pull that stuff from? Red, 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 red. Is that French? You can hit JP directly at 913. Oh. 913? I'm a 719 boy. Oh, I tried. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, get on Reddit. Like, if your voice isn't out there, it can't be heard. Yeah. We can't take a point unless we get a point. So the scary thing is, is we actually may have ID'd someone correctly, and that's why it's just vanished now. <laughs> <laughs> so, apologies if we uh, if we ruined your fun on the, on the platforms. But get out there, get interacting. 
we might actually uh, build ourselves a burner account and start stirring the pot a little bit as well. Why not? All right. Who knows? I Maybe I just took the couple, last couple of weeks off. Oh, there you go. Spicy. We'll leave it on that one. Pat Clifton, James Patterson, Dan Powell. Thanks to Ryan Ginty. Always working behind the scenes, getting this show put together. We'll see you next week on The Point Taken.